Welcome creative adventurers. Thank you for stopping by today. I'm Debbie Cohn with D. Cohn Designs. I'm glad you're here. Do you have selvages that you've been collecting and don't know what to do with? Or are you intrigued by the idea of using up those little bits we cut off the edges of our fabric? Well, I've got a project for you today. It's fun and it's easy. We're going to make selvages into a pillow. This project is taken from the book Modern Selvage Quilting, which I reviewed in another video. I'll leave a link to that at the end of the video. This book is by Rial Nelson, and in it she shows many different projects, and one that caught my eye is the pillow project. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to go from this, my big bin of selvages, to this, a cute and fun color blocked pillow. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up, tell a friend, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Then head on over to my blog at decondesigns.com where you'll find more inspiration and a free table runner pattern just for you. Let's get started. I am so excited to start this project. Let's go ahead and begin the Selvage Pillow project by talking very quickly about the materials that you'll need. First, you'll see you'll need selvages. Here's my big bin overflowing of selvages that I've collected for the past year. You'll need your rotary cutter. You'll need a ruler. You'll need glue stick that's washable. I'm using Elmer's, but you can use any brand that is uh, usable for fabric and that the glue can be washed out. You'll need a pair of scissors. Then you'll also need, of course, a pillow form, your cutting mat, some additional fabric for your pillow back and some rectangles of fabric to start each selvage block. You'll need, for every block, you'll need a one and a half inch by length of block rectangle. In my case, I have three purple blocks, so I'm gonna need three purple rectangles, three blue or teal rectangles, and three pink rectangles. She recommends in the book that you can choose other scrap fabric that you're not already using in your selvages. That way you can in introduce an additional pattern or patterns into your project. In addition to the rectangles, which are the starter rectangles for each selvage block, you'll need these other things. Let me set these aside. This is the batting you'll need to make the quilt sandwich for your quilted selvage project. This is the backing that forms the envelope back for the project. I have two pieces. I'll overlap them and sew them for the back, the envelope back of my pillow. And then you'll need some uh, scrap fabric big enough to be the back of the quilt sandwich. This fabric will be on the inside of the pillow and will never show. First, let's go through very, very quickly. What is a selvage? So a selvage would be like this. Hold that up there. It shows you uh, printing on the edge of the fabric that explains that explains the manufacturer and often the colors used in manufacturing that particular fabric. And this is not a part of the fabric that you would sew into a typical quilt. The weave is different and would shrink at a different weight. So typically you would not mix that in a regular quilt project. But for this one we will. That's one side of the selvage on a width of fabric. The other side, you will either have it, you will either have it where the selvage just has holes, as you can see here. If I tilt that a little bit, there's holes on the other side. And that section, let's see if you can see it kind of, that piece right in there, you would also cut off the part with the holes. You would not want that in your quilt project. Or if it doesn't just have holes, it might have fringe like this. And here you can see pretty well how it's woven differently right in this section here. And then it happens to have fringe attached to it. For my project, I'm going to try out using this the selvage with the fringe, as well as just the selvage with the holes. And then of course, the selvage with the printing and the dots on it. Sometimes the dots are not dots, they're something else. It could be cats or hearts or paw prints or little race cars, whatever the manufacturer decides. And here's a really cute one I'm actually going to use in my project, it is cats. Now let's talk briefly about my pillow project. From the book Modern Selvage Quilting, I am choosing this project and she has it in a 15 by 15 finish size. I'm going to make mine in 13 by 13 finish size because I have a 13 inch pillow form from another pillow that I want to use. And I will just uh, insert that inside. 
Now, the first thing you'll want to do once you have some selvages is sort your selvages by color. Um, you could sort them by manufacturer, but I recommend sorting them by color, which is what I did. And here I've sorted most, but not all of my selvages into color piles. That way I could see what I actually have so I would know what colors I want to make for my color blocked pillow. I, you can see I have a lot of white and off-white prints. I have a little bit of pink, some red, some teal, and then I have some blue. Over here is purple. And then right here I have some black. And then I pulled this separately. This is off-white. So most of my selvages are white because I sew with a lot of white background material. But I do have a few that are off-white and I'm going to set those aside for a different project. What I found to my surprise is I have only one sad little green selvage, just a tiny bit of gray, no orange, and no yellow selvages. Not quite sure why, but that's how it is. So what I did next was chose the three colors for my pillow. The original project in the book calls for a nine patch of selvage blocks in nine different colors. I don't have that many to choose from. I don't have that much in different colored selvages. So I'm going to choose three. I think I'm going to choose the purple right here. Move the black. I'm going to have purple. I'm going to take this blue out. I'm not going to use that today. I'm going to not use the red. I don't think it's going to go. I'm going to use the teal and I'm going to use the pink. So that's going to be my color palette for my pillow project. I'm going to have three blocks of purple selvages, three blocks of pink selvages, and three blocks of the aqua or teal or greenish blue selvages. The next thing I did, as you can see from here, is I cut my selvage strips down into smaller pieces. My blocks are going to be five inches unfinished. So what I did here was I uh, eyeballed it, took my shears, and just cut my selvages down to about five and a half inches or so. So you can see this one, one, two, three, four, five, and it's a little over five and a half, just eyeballing it. I cut it down into the strips. She says in the book that you'll need about five strips or so per block. So I need about 15 selvage strips of each color and I have a few in reserve in case I need them. And it all depends on how far apart you put your selvage strips. One question you might have is, Debbie, why did you just cut the strips down? Why didn't you just keep the selvages long, make one big long block and then chop it down into your smaller five inch uh, lengths that you need. The reason I did that is because I want each of my blocks to be different. Although they're the same color family, each block individually, I might decide to layer the selvages in a different order or a different width or leave some out and add some, uh, for example, maybe put this cute cat one in one of them, but not in all of them. So I wanted a little bit of variety within my blocks. That's why I chopped it down to give me more options when putting together each individual block in the color family. Here's how to put the selvage sections together. In the book, she shows three different methods for putting your selvages together. I'm using the overlap method to attach my selvages together. Before I start, I want to point out a couple of things that I've done to make it easier. First, I put painter's tape on my cutting. You may not want to use your cutting mat. I am so that you can see the blocks clearly as I make them, but you may want to use a table with a plastic a sheet of plastic over it or some other protective covering. Um, I found that I can wash the Elmer's glue off quickly and easily, so I'm going to go with this. The first thing I did was to put painter's tape down at my approximate size for the, uh, for the dimension for my block. I already have cut my strips, my selvage strips, to about five and a half or over five inches. So I'm not going to mark the top and the bottom, but I do want to mark the width of my block. So instead of having to count over each time, one, two, three, four, five and a half, I just put painter's tape and I'm going to eyeball it as I go. So the way that she says to do this in the overlap method is you take one of your um, selvage rectangles that we had. We had one for each selvage block. In this case, I've chosen a scrap piece of fabric that I like the colors, not in any of my other selvages. I do like the color and want to bring out this color in my pink selvage block. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down my first selvage. In this case, it's this one. And I'm going to, I think I want it to be about this much uh, apart. You can line up these along your mat lines if that will help you to keep it straight. I mostly eyeballed mine. It doesn't have to be exact, but it's up to you. You can place your selvage in a thinner amount showing or a wider amount showing. The key is to make sure that you have at least one quarter of this selvage on this rectangle to hold it securely. That becomes, in effect, your seam line. So once you've decided where about where you're going to put it, then you're going to put glue stick on, and you're going to put it on the selvage section. So it's right here. I just take my glue stick and do it just like that. All you're trying to do is hold the selvage in place until you can take the whole block to the machine and sew it. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to lay it on. There we go. And then I smooth it down. Then I'm going to uh, lay out the next ones, decide how I like them. Do I want this one next? Maybe about that much showing. There's my selvage. And then another one. I'm keeping in mind I have to fill this much space. So here's my really cute kitty cat selvage. I'm going to put that in here like that, I think. And then the next one, I'm thinking I want to put this one. Uh, because I want the, the selvage, the cat selvage, to show I want to have a contrasting fabric on each side of it. So dark here, dark here, and the light selvage there. I've got to fill a little bit more space, so I think I'm going to use this one. And this one has a fuzzy selvage on it. I decided to leave mine in. I don't mind that at all. You won't be stitching on that. When you measure, your quarter inch would be from where the, fez, where the fuzzy part ends, so from here to here you need to have at least that much sticking onto the piece below. So now that I've dry fit, so to speak, that's a DIY and construction term, I've kind of dry fit where I want my selvages, let's go ahead and glue them all down. A glue stick, attach this one about like that. Move that over. The next one, my Kitty Cat Selvage. Glue stick on the part I want to make sure it sticks. Put down my Kitty Cats. I think I want about that much to show. Like that, smooth it down. The next one is the bright pink zebra stripe. Putting down my glue stick. Lining it up. So it showcases my kitty cats. And there is a tiny pink line there that I can use on the selvage. Whoops, right there like that. And then my last section, again, I'm going to put my glue stick along the selvage. And smooth it down. making sure that I've gone past this mark right here. That's important. And pressing it down gently and carefully. Now that I've got my basic selvage block, what I need to do is to trim my block down. I need my unfinished size to be five by five, five inches by five inches. And I'm going to peel this up. And you can see it sticks together really pretty well. It's not moving. And then I'm going to trim to five by five by five. So I'm counting over on my I'm counting over on my mat. One, two, three, four, five. I think I want to cut a little off this end. If I wanted to adjust it, I could cut some off of each end as long as the width of my block is five inches. Then I just take my rotary cutter and trim it down to five. Then I'm going to even up my edges so that they too are about five by five. So I'm going to just choose a mat line, lining up my edge, make sure it's straight. Scoop this over like that. I'm lining it up with this mat line here and this mat line here. Then I'm going to lay my ruler down, trim, 
and then trim again on the other side, lining up my block like that, and then using my mat and ruler to trim one more time. There's one unfinished selvage block. So then you go ahead and do the same with all the rest of the blocks. And then I'll come back in a moment with my finished with my unfinished selvage blocks and show you how I'm going to lay them out in my nine patch. So here are my nine blocks. There's my blue or teal row. And let's lay out the pink row. And then my purple row. And there are the nine blocks. The next thing we need to do is to top stitch each selvage down on the block. So what that means is, for example, on this one, we're going to stitch um, with thread right just along the edge of each selvage. Right there, right there, maybe an eighth of an inch or less, just along the edge that will anchor it to the selvage beneath it, right along each edge. Here I've got my selvage block and I'm going to go ahead and top stitch each of the selvage sections. I'm going to chain piece each block as I go, like this. I'm going to slip the next one underneath and line it up under the edge. I don't stitch here because that's the anchor, because that's the anchor rectangle. I'm going to start with the next one. Again, slipping it underneath. On this one, on the fuzzy one, I'm going to start an eighth of an inch in from the edge of the, the base of the fuzzy part. Then I go back and then I top stitch the next one. You can see right here, I've top stitched it. I'm using uh, coordinating thread, mostly in the green family for this. I'll finish top stitching all the blocks then I'll show you how we're going to put them together in a nine patch. Before I lay out my, before I lay out the selvage blocks, I want to show you one block where I've done this top stitching of the selvages. So you can see here on every selvage, I have top stitched that piece down. That way when we're sewing it and when it's being used, the edges will not flip back up again, right there. <coughs> Next, I want to lay out my blocks. I have a cat in this corner over here. That shadow right there is my cat. Yes, I know, Mama. So here are my blocks. I'm going to pan downward just a little bit. You can see that I've alternated the colors. And now I'm going to begin to sew them together. The way I'm going to choose to do it is I'm going to take the first row, put the first block right sides together, sew with a quarter inch seam. Then I'm going to add the, the third block, sew together with a quarter inch seam. One row will be done. I'll repeat with the other two rows, then I will have the entire pillow front completed. Then we will attach the back. Just a couple of things to note as you sew your rows together. One is, you can see that I have sewn all my blocks with the selvages going the same direction. Since they are square, you are certainly welcome to rotate the blocks in whatever way pleases you. For me, I like this version the best. The other thing is flipping the blocks over, the row over, I'm going to press my seams open. Normally you might press to one side, but in this case there is so much bulk with all of these seams, I'm going to press them open. That will give me the flattest result on my block. Here you can see one completed row. I have pressed the seams open and that, that really helps to make the blocks lie flat. I found that I needed to finger press them first and then took the nose of my iron and ironed them flat. Now it's time to assemble the rows and it will make it a little bit more challenging because we're not nesting the seams, but that's okay. Just take your time and pin well and it should work out just fine. Move Mama Kitty's tail there, and let's get to sewing. As you can see, I'm sewing the rows together. I've pinned well. Now I'm going to sew with a quarter inch seam all the way down, joining rows one and two.
so here is the completed pillow front. Um, you can see all the selvage blocks are sewn together. I've pressed them and I'm ready to assemble the pillow front section, which would be a quilt sandwich. For the purpose of this video, I'm not going to go into detail about how to put the sections of the pillow together. You can find that on any envelope back pillow tutorial. I will go quickly through it and then show you the final pillow at the end. So for the pillow front, you've got your um, selvage blocks, you've got your batting, and then a piece of ugly fabric for the back. Next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and quilt my pillow front. I'm going to stitch along the seams on both sides, here and here. I think that will be enough. It's not that large of a pillow. Once I've got it quilted, I'm going to cut it down to size. In my case, it'll be 13 and a half by 13 and a half. Then my pillow front will be ready. The other thing I'll need to do is to deal with the pillow back. And for this, I've used a really thin white fabric, so I went ahead and quilted it. The only reason I quilted it is because the fabric is thin and I didn't want the lumpy older pillow insert I'm using to show. So I quilted it. The next thing I'm going to do is turn under this section right here just a little bit, probably half an inch, and stitch it down and do the same on the inside right here. Once I do that, I will layer the two sections together and stitch on each side, top and bottom top up here and then bottom here and this will become the envelope back once I sew it together then I will open this section and I'll insert my pillow through the envelope back here's a photo that shows you that I have stitched under the edges for the envelope back and stitched the two pieces of the envelope back together then I've pinned both the envelope back and the selvage blocks front right sides together and it's ready to stitch all the way around and there you have it, a color block pillow made of selvages. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you for stopping by. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and tell a friend. Again, you can find this project in Modern Selvage Quilting by Rial Nason. You may be able to find this book at your local library, your local independent bookstore, or on Amazon.com. I encourage you to check it out. Thank you for watching.